Hey, good evening and welcome. Welcome to the shop here in Canterbury, New Hampshire. Wherever you are, it's always nice to see where you are. I know some of you have been chatting, so we like to know, especially if you're from foreign lands. <laughs> Anywhere outside of New Hampshire feels like a foreign land these days, being all locked in like we are, but I'm glad you saw by. We're going to hang out a little bit, and I wanted to share with you tonight, oh, by the way, if you like this content, please subscribe and uh, share and like and all that fun stuff, and um, just sit back and relax. We'll have some fun. I'm going to actually talk about making models of your full-size furniture projects at times when it can help you, and it can help... Um, save you a lot of time, it can enhance the design, and it can save you materials too because you can work out things, you can see it, the piece in three dimensions and look around. Now I know there's SketchUp and all that and that works great too, but um, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I like things physical, I like to actually make a little model of it and then I can shape it and tweak it and whatever. So if you're, if you're primitive like me without the high tech of, of SketchUp, by all means, this is your method. So um, it's really not that hard. Here, I've got a few examples here that I've made in years past. Some of you might recognize this. This was from way back um, on the old Rough Cut show. I made this um, craftsman style dining table. I designed this with, the tricky part was storage of the leaves. And so I had, to, I had to see how things would work, like the dimensions, the weight of the top, like how thick I needed the top for the, the weight of the base, which I knew was going to be substantial. And all these pieces, gosh, I forget. I think they were like two and three quarter square, these chunks, the lower feet. And then the uprights, I think they were as much as an inch and a half. And uh, it was a fun project to build. But making the model helped me, to, um, helped me to figure out all the relationships so it felt and looked right in three dimensions. And having it actually physically in front of me and not on like a computer screen, I just like that. And then I could take off the top and you can see that it had a unique storage arrangement where you can actually store the leaves underneath in these little slots and there was actually two leaves that fit and then I wanted to see how that base would look with leaves in and so I had to make a little extension here put this on and then this is with one leaf so you start to see that the table, let's see, actually the, this stretches out with the one leaf. They pull apart and there's room for that. I forget how this thing went. Oh, I think this still hooked on like that. Yeah, there's, that's what it is. Okay, so that little thing has to hook on and that gives me the correct relationship of the parts. There we go. So this is how far apart the base would be for one leaf and it was pretty sweet. Made a really nice design. This is very popular. A lot of people liked it so much so that I made full-size drawings of this. This is a craftsman dining table. If you're interested in building this piece I have full-size drawings of it and I did never do uh, the in-depth video of making this, but it's pretty straightforward actually because most of the joints are at 90 degrees and there are some saw curves cut, but most of that you can figure out from the drawing if you're comfortable with 90 degree and mortise and tenon joinery. All right, so that was a fun project. And then I did uh, this thing in the, the season of classic woodworking. Um, this was my little model for the uh, waterfall coffee table. And 
I just used that to see how that leg was going to work. And then I discovered it was a little tipsy. And so I actually added a foot, a brace down here on that foot. And it worked out pretty well. But it was fun to show something actually to scale. Now here's one I actually did for a client probably 15 years ago. Yeah, it was actually a little more than that. This was a, they wanted a wine bar and very funky like contemporary. So I made this huge form and bent this plywood around this form, not this form. <laughs> This is huge. <laughs> no, I actually, the form is still here. And if you've ever come here and taken a class and you've gotten um, some of the, uh, the camera lady's fantastic muffins and fresh out of the oven and the coffee, that form is in our break room. I just couldn't throw it out. It's big and it's heavy. So I put it on wheels and now it's like, but it's masonite. You know, it's nothing fancy. But it was the inner core of this huge laminate bend I did for this wine bar. And in the back, so it was hollow, so that in the back, I don't know if you can see this, but we, because it was to scale, I was able to draw in all the relationships. There was going to be a mini fridge in here, and there were vertical slots over here. There were wine bottles, and then the wine, the stem goblets hung in here. So it was all pretty well laid out, and that was all done, and that whole unit slid right in the back. It was pretty slick. But what I wanted the model for as well was to um, show the client several different top options. Now, I had drawn these shapes because I wanted this painted base, and then the top was this amazing um, mahogany frame with lace wood in the middle. And then it was up, these, these represent these maple ball uh, pieces that it appeared the top is floating. Well, it was sort of floating. <laughs> and uh, this was not the favorite, but they ended up, I had four shapes. I only could find two of them. But this is the one that ended up being the winner. And um, it's pretty cool because it, was, it had this round mahogany frame, and that was fun to uh, splice in there and then it all this interior is lace wood and it was floating up on there it was very cool and they had these tall comfortable upholstered seats here a couple of them and it worked out really well I think I've got pictures of that yeah I was just going to say if anybody is curious you can go to our website it's epicwoodworking.com slash portfolio and you can see this piece yeah, some of the old days, doing crazy things like this. So that was a lot of fun. But some of my favorites I don't have anymore because I would make them and show them to clients. Like I had this turned round table with the seating going around, and they loved it so much they wanted to keep it. And that's happened several times because they're kind of cute little models. But they do help sell the job. If you're into uh, getting commissions as well, you can use it for that. But Sorry, I, I think I said that without my microphone being on, so I just want to repeat that. If you, if you want to see that piece, my fault. What? <laughs> oh, man. Go ahead. To think about here. <laughs> um. <laughs> we just had a big talk about a microphone right before we came on. That's why I'm surprised. Okay, go ahead. All right, so tonight we're going to have a simpler model, but um, I thought it would be helpful. Some of you have seen the um, shop stool video that we're doing. We had our first session on Tuesday night. Our next second session is coming up this Saturday at 10 a.m. It'll be a live stream. It's free. You can just check in, and um, we'll be talking about angled joinery and making the angled mortise and tenons for that seat but this is the mock-up that I did out of poplar and it's pretty clunky and uh, chunky but I'm thinking ahead of finalizing the drawing 
and I want to start, I'm already kind of ahead to think about how I'm going to shape the legs and the seat and kind of get that Wharton Eschrick feeling if you've been watching. And so I thought it would be helpful to make a model and bring it into the, the course on Saturday. And so I thought, hey, why don't I show you how I make it tonight? And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is use your scale drawing. So in this case, I drew the, ch the stool. Check it out. Can this show up on the camera? I drew the stool to scale, and it's 24 and a half to the top. And then we're going to sculpt this seat. And I'm starting with this shape, the working drawing. You know, it looks a lot like a tractor seat. <laughs> but I can, we can do something funky and change it up if we want. But um, I want to sculpt that and give it a thinner profile. Right now, it's just, that's just showing a big block of wood. But um, we want to enhance that, that seat a little bit. So everything else is to scale, though. So I used a 3 16th inch scale. So every 3 16th is equal to 1 inch. So using that on my little scale rule here, I, um, let's see, yeah, it's this one right here. So 3 sixteenths, everything equals an inch. And that, so if we go, I don't know if this will even show up. If we look at zero, I get the zero right on the ground. You come up to the larger numbers there, 24 and a half. It's at the top right now. So this this rail here that's one inch is measuring actually three sixteenths of an inch in real size. So because this is to scale, I can just use these actual measurements in real dimensions now to make the parts for my model. My model will be this size. So if I measure right there, you can see that that lower stretcher is 3 sixteenths of an inch right here. And then if I measure the thickness of my legs right at that blocky area, it's a quarter inch. And then my seat blank, I've got it at approximately an inch and three quarters right now. That seat blank on the drawing measures 5 sixteenths. So that's the thickness of the stock that I want to get out. And I cut rough lengths and I've got that stock right here. So check it out. I've got, this is my front to back stretcher. It's just 3 16 by 3 16 And I just had a longer piece of white oak. I'm actually using the same materials. So I ripped this out of some white oats, oak stock. Um, these, this is for the legs. This is the quarter inch by quarter inch square. So that's going to be proportionally exactly the same as my scale drawing. And then my last piece is 3 sixteenths by about 5 sixteenths. That's that front rail that I talked about being a little wider so we could make a foot rest on it. And, but it's going to be shaped and a little bit. All right, so, oh, and my seat material. This is just a piece of, of walnut. And I dressed it down to a 5 16 thick. And I made the width the same as my scale width, like this top view. I scaled it in the 3 16 scale to be 9 inches deep and 13 inches wide. But 9 inches deep equals, I wrote it right there, 1 and 1, I'm sorry, 1 and 11 16 So let's just put it on there. So it's 1 and 11 16 wide, which this stock is. I'm not going to cut it to length because we can do some shaping while it's still long and then cut it out and do the final shaping with that smaller piece. All right, so let's get going. Okay, just you know, my mic is not... Oh, not working at all? Talk testing, loud. Testing, testing. Okay. I can see it moving. Okay. Can anyone hear you? No? 
Did they hear you the last time? Okay. All right, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to keep this right off to the side here. And I'm going to start cutting my pieces as if they were large scale. Okay? So you might have to come in here again. Are you still off? I'm just trying to figure this out. Is anyone saying anything? Oh, that stinks. Are you sure you put everything back the way it was? Yeah, let's try. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Everything's up. How about now? Hello, testing. They're probably hearing my mic. Let's try this one. Testing, testing, testing. How about that? What? Okay. It's just low. I don't know why. Anyway, you keep going. I'll do what I got to do and not be... All right. Can they... I, I moved one thing. I hope it's they can still static. hear me. It's too much static. Oh, okay. 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 There. We're Sorry, back to where guys. we were. Sorry. All right. We'll figure it out. Okay. So we've got the drawing here. Okay. Good. They might be hearing you on my mic. No, it's working. Okay. So... What I want to do is start sizing the pieces, and I'm actually going to put the angles on the end cut. So I've got this, these front legs are leaning at 9 degrees off of vertical, and my back leg is leaning 12 degrees off of vertical, or 78 degrees and 81 degrees, okay? So I set these two squares, these two bevel gauges, I mean, to those angles. So this larger bevel gauge is at the larger 12 degree angle and the smaller bevel gauge is at the 9. And I wanted to make a little cutting box, like a miter box, at these angles. So it's pretty simple. Once I got my stock out, I took another piece of oak and I ripped a trough in it, a groove, a little wider than a quarter of an inch. And then I notched this off and then you can see what I already did there. I set my angle and I brought it down and I made a line and then I cut using my Japanese saw here. So this is the 12 degree line and then up here I have the 9 degree or whatever, 99 degree, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But, you know, you may be saying, why do you have two lines there? Well, I screwed up the cut the first time. <laughs> I was cutting with my Japanese saw, and look at I drifted off of square. So that first line, it cut, you can see my, my pencil line, and I drifted off. The second one, I paid a little more attention. It's harder to track those Japanese saws, at least mine. I have to really be aware of what I'm doing there. All right, so what I'm going to do is set this in my vise, this is my little miter box, so I can bang these out. There's a curious question about how you safely cut such thin pieces of wood. Todd is curious. Oh, it's actually very dangerous. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Todd, that's a great question. I just use a push stick. I have a, a very thin, like, push stick that pushed it through, and with a good blade and everything clean and, and straight right up against the fence. You can do two sides, like you can take it out of a notch of a corner of a thicker piece, like if this walnut, you know, if this were white oak, you could make one pass in this direction and then you turn it so you get the other dimension that way and then the piece usually slides out. But I just... Yeah, it wasn't bad. I just ripped it. It's important to have a small, a thin push stick that has good tight control on it the whole time. So that's how I did it. Um, so now I've got my miter box. By having those lines there, you can see I get my Japanese saw and I slide in these little guys. Now I've got, it's perfectly set up to make beautiful cuts right at the angle. So while I'm here, this is my, this could be my back leg stock. 
Let's see what I got here. Yeah. Is that long enough? Yeah. All right, so this will be my back leg. I'm going to make a cut right at 12 degrees. There's just two 12 degree cuts with that. That's it. See how fast that goes through? And now I'm going to use the drawing and I'll come right up here and I'll just get it on there. And I'll make a mark right at that point. Come back. Sorry, I'm moving too fast for you. Okay, let me just move the. To really set it flat, I gotta move this guide here. It's important to have it on a flat bench. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't like the tool tray. All right, um, so this is the back leg angle. That's the 12 degrees. So I set that miter I just cut right up at the top. And then I'm eyeballing right down to the floor and getting that, that ground level. So that's why I want my next cut. So I'm going to come back to my miter box. My miter box. It's so nice. Very expensive. And I'm going to just set that pencil line right just put the waist side, it's really not that critical, but um, I'm just holding it right here. That's why I notched this out so I could hold it better. There we go. There's our back leg. All right, so I'm gonna set that over by itself. Now I get the other square. Now this is my, um, my nine, I'll get my nine degree leg out of this. Oh, what did I do with that? I have a special little piece I gotta find. Oh, here it is. Phew. All right, so this is gonna cut that nine degree coming this way. It's going out nine, but it's also, looking at the side view, it's coming toward you nine degrees. So it's got a double nine degree cut on the end. So to get that, I've got my nine degree angle in here, and then I cut this little nine degree wedge. So that's a nine degree wedge. And it's a little, about a quarter inch. So that's gonna slide right in my little miter gauge. And then I can just set my piece right in there and overhang the groove. Here we go. Just use the nine degree, you okay? Your fingers are in the way. So oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. Master at work. I have to hold it. <laughs> Wait, my fingers are in the way. All right, hold on a second. I just wanted to see how well you set that in there. Okay, I'm going to go a little forward here. It's a little thin at the beginning. Wait, let me use the other end. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so I'm going to hold it firmly using both those angles. And now just let the saw run right in the groove. And I have created a beautiful nine degree angle in two dimensions there. So again, all I have to do is come over to the drawing and set it down. Now, if you remember last, if you were here Saturday, this is close to the right dimension, but it's actually a little bit longer because it's also angling out toward you. So I'm just taking it out. Um, it's about a quarter inch, so it's less than a sixteenth. Okay? So there we go, to scale. Now I'm going to set it back in there. And... Get it right on the pencil line. There we go. Fell right on the floor. Okay, so I'd get two legs like that. And let's just do that really fast. I already got my first cut. I'll use this to mark my next one. 
Just set it right on there. Back in the jig. Pencil line right there. These, these little things, making these little miter boxes, I've done a lot of that for if you're putting cock beading on, around a drawer or any type of little frame. It's super easy. You just take some scrap like that and make sure it's true and then you rip the groove in a way that you can hold the work and <coughs> you get a really nice little dedicated miter box. All right, that's my waist. Here's my two front legs with the double nine degree. So for this to actually work, this is the front, front and front. So I'm gonna just put a, I could even put my little maker's tr triangle on there. Like this. Like that. <laughs> so that's our front. <coughs> what? You're just making fun of, I'm making fun of, I don't know if they can hear me. You're making noises? No, they're making fun ideas about all the little tools that you need actually to do this job. Oh, yeah. You need a little dust collector, <laughs> a little toggle lamp, clamp. It's almost like you're a jeweler. Now, some of you guys have probably made uh, dollhouse furniture, and that that's kind of fun. I mean, people dedicate themselves to just that type of work. There's people out there that have done that. So then I'm going to, and it's pretty nice stuff. Whoops, did I do that wrong? Yes, I was distracted. Not, not your fault. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was distracted by talking. All right, so here, I got to get it on the correct side. It's tricky with this angle. And then that's just going to mark where that front rail is going to go. So there we go. And now I can bring my other triangle and just open them like that. Line up the ends. What? <laughs> they still they're, making they're jokes. They're curious how you're going to do the mortise and tenon. <laughs> <laughs> With my, my little mortiser. You guys, come on. <laughs> Chip says no, no job is so small that it doesn't require a big, expensive power tool. <laughs> No, I've got that uh, that 16th inch mortising chisel. We're gonna go set that up now. <laughs> it's a B. It's a it's a jeweler's. Um, but no, where I'm actually not even gonna. That's the fun thing about these models. You don't even have to have joinery. You just glue the ends. And I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna glue. I'll glue it up with hot glue. Um, we're gonna switch out to one that I've got further down. So you're probably wondering how is he gonna get this done but here's the back leg and I, I use that I get that here the same way I've got the angle correct it's kind of fun because you can do it right off your drawing that's that back stretcher or rung and that's where I want to glue that one okay so that's that now the uh, smallest pieces I've got my my front footrest, that's made out of that six, this is now down to the three sixteenths by the inch and, I'm sorry, by five sixteenths. That's going to come this way. So I have to cut that with a nine degree and a nine degree angle. So let's do that. I'm going to bring it over to my little jig and I'll make a cut. This one it's a little wider. I could put a shim in there, or but the the Japanese saw is cool because it just cuts on the pull stroke, so I don't really need any support in there if I can get it. Here we go. Just takes one pull and we're through. Okay. So then the uh, same thing. I come over. I'm gonna check the miter. I line it up, and then I get right off the drawing. That's the top of my miter. And let's see, I got it wrong. I'm going to, actually it's not wrong. I'm going to just go right there. So that'll work. Just set it right there. The hardest part is getting the saw in that curve cut. Okay, and there we go. 
one shot. Okay, there's our footrest. And the last one is that 3 16 by 3 16 And that'll be my back. So on one end, I have to be 9 degrees. On the back end, it's the 12. So let's do the 9 first. Is that okay? Let's do the 9 first. I'm with you. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to set it back in. And again, I'm going to use the drawing to mark, whoops, the nine's over here. Set that there. And I'll get the mark for the 12. Yeah, okay. All right, so back to the, here's the 12. This is tricky because I'm actually on the wrong angle here. But I'm going to hold it out like this. Keep that trough clean. And I'm on the pencil line. That's it. All right, so how about that? <laughs> we have sawn all our materials to length. Don't you wish regular woodworking was this fast? And uh, I've got my back. So I'm going to put a B right, right there. And that's it. I've got all my parts cut to size. Now I would center. I'm going to mark just that center line on the back of my footrest. So this will be the back of it. This will help me mark the joinery. I've got my nine degree. I'll just pick some, go to the six and split the difference. Right here's my six. That's the center. So I want to go three sixteenths is, so I'll just mark, get that center line in the middle of three sixteenths. And then this is going to get my front to back. Okay, that's where I'm going to put my joinery right there. <laughs> All right, so that's the front. Okay, so now I would shape those up. I'll show you a quick little shaping method here. Um, I decided on my drawing, you can see on the scale drawing here, that we're going to have these taper and come down to about 7 eighths wide there. And the same at the foot. Now I might alter that. I'm doing this initially to scale for this. And then when I do the final, we'll tweak it to the real size. Um, but I think, I think that's going to work pretty well. I like the way that um, Wharton Eschricks, his are turned. And he gets quite slender at the top. And then he also has them get heavier near the, the middle where he has his joinery. He has those three rails going around. And then they taper down and get narrower at the foot. I mean, you could make your stool and just leave it full at the bottom, you know, chunkier and octagonal, and then taper. But I'm going to go with the double taper here. We'll see how we do. All right. So... Just to speed things along here, I would, uh, I just mark the ends and I'm just going to come in a little bit. If I come in about not quite a sixteenth, let's see, actually, um, 3 sixteenths is an inch, so I want to take off a half. So, yeah, so I'm a 30 seconds strong, or 3 sixty-fourths, each one of these lines. What do you think? So it <laughs> it's probably a little more than these are. But if I mark out the ends of all these, it helps me to... I'm going to leave these lines on the ends when I... I'll first cut a taper, and... I'll just do one of these to show you how 
I'd quickly shape these up. There's a uh, confusion about you maybe cutting the same angle at the end of the stretcher, back stretcher. But remember, you did it from the right side. Yeah, no, I got, the first one I did was 9 degrees, and then the second one I did was 12. So, where is that? That's the, that's not it. Here it is. Yeah, so one end is steeper, like that's 12. This was the 9. I did 9, and then I used the 12. Did I? Oh, wait. No, you're right. Maybe I did them both 9. Maybe I did them both 9. I got them at the right angle. I just didn't. Um... Oops. You guys are checking me. <laughs> That's nine. Oh, yeah, I did them both nine. So I'd have to chop that. Thanks for pointing that out. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I should have done that in my 12 degree miter. Yeah, so I could have done that holding it better like that. I knew something felt funny. Um, because it's just a little steeper angle, well, I'd cut another piece, not a big deal. I'm not even going to mess with that one right now. I'll go to another one. Um, I want to show you one of the legs and then the front uh, stretcher that we'll have as our footrest. Because this one will be coming in a little bit on the back and then we're, we'll be make, squaring this up and then the front, what I want to do is, is have it come up and come out so it becomes a little thicker in the middle for the footrest like that. And then the same thing on the other end. This is not showing very well, is it? I'm trying to use a good pen so you can see it. There we go. And then on the end. And so... Something like that is what I'm looking for on both ends here. Okay. So I'll just, I'm going to just bandsaw that little notch. I'll be right back. So now, no, I didn't change the bearing on that. <laughs> I forgot. All right, check that out. We've got, that's going to be kind of our notch. I'll sand that up a little bit. And uh, we'll be shaping this like the footrest. All right, so let's just come on over here to the, uh, I could try sawing that long taper, but it's so, it's so thin. It's actually fun to do it on a sander like this. Wow, I almost sat on my mock-up. And uh, so I'm just going to hold this and I'm going to make some pencil lines here, or pen lines, so I don't go too deep. I want to leave it close to square right in the, around where the stretcher's going. So I don't want to, I'll just take these lines and that'll be it. So I leave it full right where I'm going to have that joint. Okay, and this piece I'll deal with in a second. All right, so here we go. I'm going to just hold it and taper. I'm going to create the long tapers here. So here we go. Check the end. Not quite to the pencil. That's pretty good. I'll go one more. Now I'm just going to go to all four sides pretty quick. Next side.
Okay, now I'll do the foot. It's a little steeper. Good. And last one is this one. Okay, that's good. Now this little guy, I'm just going to hit that curve. Okay, what? It says kids don't try this at home. <laughs> all right, so we've got our, our long tapers on all four sides here, and it's tapered at the foot, and that's our joint right there. Um, oh, you know what? I took off my uh, mark. I like marking these on the top, but uh, I can tell. Cecil's asking, will that change the tendon size in the seat? Um, no, I, I accounted for the tenon. The tenon's going to be seven-eighths wide at the top. So that's what we, uh, we won't go more than seven-eighths at the top. So that will go right down to that. Yep. Um, so let me get this squared away here. Okay, so that's the right front. So you got to label these somewhere where you can keep it. So this will be the right. <laughs> this is so small. All right, so once I've got this, now I can shape these up. So you can, I'm going to get my whittling knife. Bob's suggesting maybe a, a larger scale for beginner model makers. Yeah, you could go larger. <laughs> You could, but then it's more to shape them. But yeah, you're right. Um, so to, I'm going to create an octagon here. This is what we're going to have to do on the, the actual one. You can try using your spoke shave like this, which is I'm just taking the corner off, and then I rotate. That's working pretty well. And this is the method you want to use. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's pretty safe. What? It looks like I'm going to hurt my hand. Does it look bad? What do you think? <laughs> it's uh, actually my my hand is supporting it at that 45 perfectly. This is working out great. I mean, you can go like this if you want. It's harder. Dan says hopefully the nurse, the, the uh, first aid kit is nearby. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the bathroom. Some of you know that. <laughs> um, now the taper the bottom of the foot. Just rotating it. And we'll put a little bird right in there. <laughs> I always go to my Bob Ross. All right. That's looking good. Now, I can fine tune it with the, my little whittling knife, I can, because when we actually do um, shape this up, I'll be using the spoke shave and we're going to get it completely faceted all around. So it'll have a roundedness to it, but it'll be all completely tooled. This is like peeling uh, potatoes. You're joking that it feels like we're making toothpicks. <laughs> what happened to the fine <laughs> this guy is fine furniture are you kidding me <laughs> yeah it's a joke it's arguable right now. <laughs> all right so then at the top same thing you want to make nice sweeps <laughs> but you know what i'm saying you just want to keep this and get it kind of faceted i actually prefer this for this guy but this little foot now uh okay so that's upright 
this is where I want, I'm going to have to have that foot come down. This is where the whittling is actually really handy because I need to bring this down quite a bit and bring this in. I think when we see the end result, it'll warrant all of this effort, right? <laughs> you think? I don't know. I always feel that way when I see them. They're so cool. And then I flip it around. This is awesome. This gives you, a, so really this is kind of a precursor to the final when we, when we do actually leave things with some texture to them. You know, the white oak. So that's going to be my footrest in the front, something like that. You liking that? <laughs> Madison said this is why they pray for you and your safety. <laughs> At this is time every Thursday night. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, you know, worst case scenario is I do something stupid and hurt myself, and then, then we go viral. That'd be awesome. Oh, <laughs> All right, so there we go. Not We've got our sacrifice. That's an an awesome footrest. Now I could do more on that, you know, but we're getting pretty close. You can tell, right? And here's the other front leg. Well, I went ahead and I got the other legs all set up, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But let's work on the seat. Um, the seat is going to come out of the, the walnut. Now, this is really one of the things I wanted to get a feel for as well, like how the shape and this. And I want to get that Warden Eshrick look to it, where the it kind of looks almost like, um, it's, it's almost draping there like paper or something like where it's laying over and it gets thin at the edge. Um, I like that look. I won't be dead on that because we're going to have our seat is going to be shaped a little differently. But here's all we have to do. We're going to clamp this to the bench. And... Take my little template. I made this template from my scale drawing. This is the seat. And I'll just step right in here. We're going to go. Are we going to see the new power tool for this? Uh, no. <laughs> Not yet. We, w we will when we get to the real thing. I'm pretty sure. But you're going to see kind of what we're going for here. No All right. No. So there we go. Um, this is the center line. So I'll just approximate that. Okay, so this, I'm going to take a carving chisel, and I know I want to dish it out so that we create kind of that groove for the seat. We'll talk more about actually shaping this when we get to the seat, but I'm going to go in both sides. I want this to be comfortable too, you know, like Wharton Eshrix had just a little impression in the middle. and I've never seen anybody's seat fit in that. <laughs> it's a one cheeker. You have to sit kind of to the side actually. So we're going to give this a, a double, kind of like a... <laughs> Tom Thumb is interested in buying one of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, so anyway, this is just going to dish out. I'm going to try to go a little faster here. It's kind of fun to carve a little bit. Stay off the center line. I have to navigate a little bit. <laughs> I can't get this angle. It's okay. You're you're important. That's the. How's that? You got a good shot now. So. I'm. You notice I'm coming from angles where I'm trying not to get tear out. So I'd come in. If you go across the grain, it's pretty safe. But you'll see it sometimes on the side. So you want to come downhill, basically. And then across this middle area. I don't want to leave it that high in the middle, but I'm just keeping my center line for now. But anyway, 
that's kind of the idea. We'll have it dished out. This is starting to look like a tractor seat, but uh, this is probably how we're going to rough out the final seat. Um, I'm going to actually contour a sample blank to uh, make a mold. I mean, make a, a model. I may even make a, a mold, you know, sit down on some plaster and get the <laughs> perfect contours. <laughs> I have thought about that, believe me. Uh, I think I'd actually have to be around for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that could get messy. That's a little, taking it a little too far, I mean, you know. We're just not going to do that. All right, so when I get it about like that, I, I have these little sanding discs. I'm going to bring this in. Hold it in such a way. It's kind of a nice... Change to a little finer grit. That's starting to look like something. Okay. So now I can, once you've got your seat dished out, then you can cut it out. Let me cut this out. We'll do a little more work on it and then I'll show you the finished one. Sounds, that sounds awful, huh? So I can round those edges a little bit here. And so I'm going to have that impression there, but then I'm going to want this to go down more like the Wharton Eschrix, you know. So there I could carve more, um, but using the belt sander actually works pretty well. I'm going to come on back over here. No, I was using the, the, uh, the cordless drill. So it's a good idea to put some contour lines on here, which we're actually going to do on our final, on the actual. So I want this to fold over, so we'll have it coming in down to about there anyway. And then in the front, I could have it even sweep down a little more and go down a little more. And then it could come up a little bit and then fold down toward the corner. I'll show you what I mean right now. Here we go. I meant to file. No, it's okay. I'll just. Okay, so I'm just kind of tapering over the edges there. You can see in the front here, I wanted to file it a little more because I want it 
to come down. I forgot to show you while we were still in the clamps. But you see how the, your legs will lean. That's where you can get a hard cut line right there when you're sitting on a shop stool because you're actually on the front of it. It's not like you're sitting in it like a chair. Um, so that should be good and inclined there on the front edge. That's my plan anyway. And then this can keep getting softened in this way. And I can come along and that's not quite as much as I want to go, but I want it to look kind of fluid on the top. So I'll take away those lines. We'll end up with a fluid kind of seat. Now, the bottom, I want that to contour up as well, like this. So you get the idea. I just would soften these edges and play around with it. You know, it's nice because you can you can work the shape. Now, I actually want to do another one with an angular side, so not so not so um, tractor seatish. But see, by coming up from the bottom like that, you, I'll give myself a, a thinner profile. And that looks nicer than it being really thick. I think. That's one of the appeals, I think, of the Wharton Eshrick seat. It kind of undulates, and then it comes to this nice thin edge because he brought it up from underneath on the edge. Let me get a tissue for a second. I'm going to have to. All right, so I do some more with that. Here's one I already did. Check this out. So this is my final contour. See, this one's still in process. But see how, how sculpted it is. And the edge, I've really got it to a finer edge all around there. So I may find that we don't have to, you know, I don't, maybe you don't have to start with as thick a material. We could possibly get away with six quarter. But I don't know, maybe not. So that's my seat. Now, I've seen others that leave a nice line around the edge, like, and you could have a thicker, you could have a thicker edge. That's all really up to your, your choice. And you can see how in the front, I've got it going down more in the front like that, okay? <clears throat> now, I marked on the bottom of this blank the seat locations using the drawing, my scale drawing has those locations right here. I can see where those mortises are. So I calculated right where the posts would be coming up through. And earlier, just before you got here, I glued up some whittled legs. And can you see this? <laughs> I glued up some whittled legs. See, I've got my tapers. And here's my footrest. See, this one's a little more refined. And the, the back piece, everything's got that faceted. It's not perfect. But see, I'm just using hot glue, a drop, and that actually works quite well. So now the last thing we have to do is glue this down on those little spots or pretty close to them. This is going to be tricky to hold, but I think I can do it if I do it like that. Okay, so I'm going to get some drops of hot glue on those squares, and let's see if we can make this work. Here's my hot glue gun. Bill wants to skip that across Walden Pond. What do you think? <laughs> That's awesome. We love Walden Pond, Bill. I spent a lot of time there, actually. Maybe one drop there. 
Yeah, all that work. It looks perfect like a stone. So there is no rule, like, of the shape your seat has to be, you know. I mean, you can make it funky. Whatever. All right. Get these on there. Can you see? Can you see? I'm going to try to hit all those spots. Just set that bad boy right in there. And hopefully it will cool pretty quick. Carla was saying it looks a little Sam maloof -ish. Yeah. Um, the sculptural nature of that seat. Yeah, definitely. And being walnut. Do you think the Shakers, David's asking, did this 200 years ago? The hot glue? No. <laughs> These little models? I don't think so. All right, so those landed pretty well. Let's see how she looks. Hey, <laughs> it's awesome. So now we're starting to really see the potential of what we could achieve with our stool. And, and that's given me hope that we're on to something good, you know? Um, we could do a funkier seat, I mean, but I really like the rustic appearance of the legs. Now, ours is going to be a little more refined than this, but you can see what I mean about the way it's going to look. Now, I just happen to have a little shellac here. Let's go ahead and put some color on so we'll get to see a preview of how it's going to look finished. Um, I'll just brush it on really quick. Little orange shellac. It's very, it's actually cut, so it's kind of amber like we'll want on the final. Tom Thumbs up, loves it. Says. Tom Thumb, <laughs> he's happy. And look at that, huh? And let's get it, wait till you see it on the seat. Because walnut is a cold kind of wood with the purplish hues. And you really need some amber on there. And this type of finish is perfect for walnut. So you're going to see it warm up a lot um, when it hits. This is like dollhouse furniture. Okay, now we get the seat. Oh, it's that perfect joinery down there. Those globs of hot glue. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Getting that nice brown, golden color. So this is a nice encouragement you know that we're on the right track we've got everything's to proportion of the stool that I want to build and that's the direction we're going you like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know they're all comedians tonight I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's check it out. Back view. I really like it. There's something about the three-legged stool that has this artistic potential. Like, I feel like you could go so many ways with this as a form. So, I don't know. I kind of, I'm thinking about, I don't like these rounded corners quite as much, but we're going to play around with it. I, that could be on the drawing, and I could offer an op option on the drawing as well. So this is great, though. I'm happy with it. Let me put it on a, where's my little whiteboard? <laughs> we could do that. I don't know how safe it's going to travel, but uh, that could be, I'll tell you what, we're going to have, we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a runner-up prize. <laughs> the runner-up <laughs> gets a mouse seat. And, uh, but this is actually 
one of a kind. You won't find these many places. <laughs> but that's giving us a good a feel for where we're headed. So if you want to be part of that stool project, we're going to pick it up on Saturday at 10 a.m., the second stage. And we're coming through what we don't show here is the joinery. On our finished one, we're going to have these, these mortise and tenons wedged coming through the seat. You'll see those three up there. They'll be coming out these ends, and we'll have one coming out the back. So it's going to really have a lot of character, the final version. I think uh, Carlos is right. I think it should go with the winner. You think so? The mock-up should go with the winner. I don't know. We could have two prizes. Uh, why don't we have a vote tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you guys, well, we could talk about it. We've got, we have at least three sessions more, probably more, by the time we get to it. All right, any other questions? No, Daniel's mentioning that at the Wharton Eschrick Museum, there's a virtual open house tomorrow from 6.30 to 7.30. Ooh, Thank awesome. Thank you for telling us that. We'll, we'll look that up. When, how do you get to that? It's, it must be on their website, I'm imagining, Daniel. That's awesome. Virtual. Yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've seen videos of people checking out his home. It's actually his shop space. I don't know if it's his home. But um, a lot of the pieces he made are there. And they left it very much like it. So he was a little eccentric. Um, liked things kind of off, off skewed a little bit, you know. So, but quite a guy. I mean, the predecessor of the studio furniture movement in the U.S. So pretty important guy in furniture design history. Is that it? Any more questions? Just, uh, I don't think I'm being heard, so I apologize for my microphone. Well, not talking that loud. Uh, the camera lady is apologizing <laughs> that she cannot be heard. <laughs> Sorry about that. She's trying. We've got to figure out what's going on. Oh, I but, do have a question. Oh, okay. Okay, question. Felipe is asking, why did you make the design choice of faceting the legs instead of turning them on the leg? Oh, Lupe asked, why did I make the design choice of faceting instead of turning? Well, that's a good question. I actually wanted to offer a, a means of making this stool for people who don't have a lathe and haven't turned. So we're using an approach that is going to use mortise and tenon joinery and not even round tenons. So, but yeah, that's, that's why. But it's kind of like in the old days, you know, a lot of them were spoke shaved anyway, like stool legs in more of that primitive fashion would be spoke shaved. So we're going for that look. We'll refine it a little bit, but um, it'll appear to be round, roundish at the end. So it'll have more of this rustic feel to it. Is that it? All right. Hey, thank you so much for hanging out and making this cute little stool with me. Um, I hope you'll show up on Saturday. It's going to be a, a good time. We're going to make those, those angled tenons, and we'll start to see our real full-size stool that we could actually sit on coming to life. So I hope you'll join me for that. Remember to mash that subscribe button if you're enjoying these videos and share and like as you will. Thanks for your good humor tonight. <laughs> Thanks for being with me and spending a little time in the shop. I look forward to seeing you next week on Shop Night Live. And this Saturday at 10 a.m. But until next week, I'll see you from Shop Night Live. <laughs>